Okay, so tonight we're getting our size ready and we're gonna use that for our gold leaf. And so I just heated up my one to 15 um, distilled water to rabbit, or rabbit skin glue to distilled water. It was the same um, stock solution that I used for the bowl. I'm gonna use it for the size. Size is kind of a fancy name for glue that's gonna stick the gold to our icon. And so uh, it was just in this hot pot. I had it sitting like so with a lid on it. That's how I heated it up. Just a great way to store it in the fridge. Just slap a lid on it and it lasts forever long you need it. If you open it up and it smells rotten, don't use it. I also have distilled water and ethyl alcohol. And this is 95% denatured lab grade. I got this off of um, Amazon, but you can totally use vodka or rum or whatever you got laying around the house. Um, nothing with, you know, it should be, I don't know. I just go straight for the lab grade. It, it's 95%. We want as high of alcohol percentage as we can get. So um, it seems to work better on the gold. And then I have just a shot glass and two empty jars. And again, I'm a mom and there's all kinds of stuff going on behind me and there's nothing I can do to stop it. So, <laughs> sorry for the noises. I'm just gonna put some distilled water in the shot glass here. And the first thing that I'm gonna make is um, my size. Let me adjust this. This will be better for us all. Sorry about that. Um, size. Size is one um, to six of the rabbit skin glue to water. And so um, I only use one rabbit skin glue to six waters. We don't need a lot of this. Um, this is really truly just the first layer of gold that uses this. Four, five, six, sorry. I don't talk and work at the same time very well. So this is what we call gold size. It's a very weak rabbit skin glue solution. One to six. I could do one more first for kicks and giggles, but I really don't think I'm gonna need it. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is my weak size. And again, this is gonna be used for the first layer of gold on my icon. And I usually do two, but you can put more on than that. And the more layers of gold you put on, the better. I'm done with my rabbit skin glue. We won't need it for anything else. So I can pop that back in the fridge. It's good to go. And the other thing that I'm going to make is um, my gilding water. And gilding water is alcohol and water. And again, you can use vodka and I've used rum. Um, vodka is traditional. Rum is what I have in my cabinet sometimes. Um, but lately I've been using the lab grade alcohol, ethyl alcohol. And so this is two to one water to alcohol. And so it's okay if this is tiny hint of glue. I can't imagine there's a lot in there because it just did six things with water. One, two, one alcohol. One, two, one alcohol, one. And you can save this. This is alcohol and water um, lasts forever. And so if you have good containers, um, you can uh, tuck this away somewhere. I like using um, homemade cosmetic containers. They have a, a white cap that seals it and makes it waterproof. And you can always make more of this as you need it. And if you don't feel like saving it, you don't have to. Um, my Our Lady of Guadalupe is gonna have a lot of gold on it. So um, I'm gonna do maybe one more of these and I think that'll probably be enough. And that's the only thing I use this alcohol for is, is my icon, so that should be it. So I have weak size um, and then I have my gilding water. And the size usually has a, 
a cloudiness or a yellow to it because of the rabbit skin glue and the alcohol is completely clear. So we're ready to go put our gold on. Yahoo! Okay, so the next step is to take our size. This was the one that was kind of yellow. It's got the rabbit skin glue and distilled water in it. It's a very, very weak solution. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put the size onto the bowl. And we're going to let it dry. And that will become tacky. So I'm literally, you know, I'm just putting the brush right into my jar. I see a little fuzz there. I don't want that. And I'm just going to run it over my bowl and this will put the smallest layer of rabbit skin glue on the surface when the water evaporates off of it. Uh, and this way then the bowl will be prepared for the gold. If you miss a spot with this, then the gold probably will not stick. So it's important to make sure that you don't miss any spots. It's not too hard to do because you can definitely see a color change. And it's a thin layer. I'm not really puddling it too much anywhere. And I'm just going to do the whole thing. And then you can save this rabbit skin glue size in the fridge by putting a lid on it. Um, and this is the white lids that I was talking about in the last little segment. And they just fit right on top like that and there's a lid that goes with it and that makes this waterproof and it will hold it for a long, long time so this is a cosmetic like for people that make homemade cosmetics i thought it was kind of slick i found those on amazon it's pretty crazy you can find everything you need to do an icon on amazon it is kind of an expensive hobby um, I got around some of the expense by um, finding a friend who wanted to learn with me or to continue with his uh, iconography journey and we split a bunch of it. Um, once you've got the stuff, it's not too bad to maintain. It's uh, gold. It's probably the most expensive part of an icon. It runs about $2 to or so a sheet and depending on how much gold you want to put on this thing um, it can be expensive so I went a little crazy there I'm just going to wipe it off with my finger before it soaks in too much and I'm almost done with this one and I go pretty quick but I'm a pretty seasoned painter so if you need to go slower by all means go slower I knock one of these out about every month or so maybe two depending on how busy I am at work because this is just for fun and a uh, way to pray Almost there. Okay, and then I'm going to let this sit for about 5-10 minutes until it's dry. Um, you don't want to do the next step unless this is dry. So, looks like we are about there. And that's it. So, that's all we're going to use the, the, um, the size. That's the only part we use the size for. And so I'm just gonna cap it and throw it in the fridge and save it for my next icon. And it may not hurt to actually like take a Sharpie or whatever <laughs> and write that this is size on it. You know, and that way you don't get confused when you go grabbing stuff out of the fridge. All right, 
I'll see you next time for the gold lead. Next, I'm going to talk to you real quick about the gold that you can buy. Um, there are two different kinds of gold that work fine for these icons. You can use um, actual uh, 24 karat gold um, transfer sheets or 25 four karat gold um, loose leaf. Um, and both are great. You also have simulated gold as well. Um, and the simulated gold works really well too. Uh, it looks the same. It just uh, has the, it usually tarnishes after many, many years and you might have to like, you know, spruce it up a bit, but so far nothing's tarnished when I've used it. Um, the simulated gold is runs, I don't know, like $35, $40 for uh, this box where the, the gold that's 24 karat will run 40, 50 bucks a package. So sometimes I have to get this because it's what I can afford and other times I can get this. Um, if you see transfer gold, what that means is that the gold is already on sheets that you can then take and transfer the gold. It's very easy to move. So this is 24 karat gold attached to transfer sheets. I only have two sheets left in this book. So at the moment, I do not have um, the ability to go and get a bunch of gold. So I'm going to be using um, tw the, tw the gold simulated gold uh, leaf and it's loose. And so when you open or are working with gold, you wanna open the, the book very, very carefully. You don't want any breezes at all going on around you. Looks like I'm upside down. Um, we'll see. So, well, it looks like I'm upside down again. Gold leaf is super finicky. Any little breeze can send it flying. It's literally just tucked in between these pages of tissue paper. And um, if you're skilled with gold, you can use the horsehair brush to lift it and move it. Um, but I found what's the, the easiest way to transfer the gold is to cut sheets of wax paper. And then you can, sounds like dinner's done. Um, sorry about that. And you can stick the wax paper in the crack and just lay it in the book. Give it a little tap. And the loose leaf now becomes um, transfer. So what's nice about this is once it's on the gold, is on the uh, wax paper, then I can take scissors and cut it in half and manipulate it a little bit. If you try to just grab it with your fingers or tweezers or whatever, it folds up into a little ball and you just lost a sheet of gold. And so <laughs> gold is super duper finicky. It's probably the thing that's been the hardest for me to learn and get used to using. Um, but the techniques that I'm sharing with you after much trial and error is uh, my favorite. So uh, I'm just about dry. I just have a few areas that are still wet. I'm going to be using the transfer gold and not the true 24 karat gold for this one. And so um, I'm going to get several of these sheets ready so that I can just go. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I have lots of gold sheets ready to go. Um, my gold sheets are pretty wide and the areas I need to cover are pretty narrow. So I think what I'm going to do is cut each sheet in half using a good pair of scissors. If you have a crumo pair of scissors, it will tear the gold and look crummy. Um, this first round of gold may not be like the most beautiful thing in the world, but I don't worry about it. Um, everything ends up fixing itself sooner or later. For this, I'm using uh, uh, flat brushes. They're kind of square on the end. I have a bigger one and a smaller one for other places. Uh, I don't know what this is. It's a flat 50. Five, zero, I don't know. Oh, it's a 10. It's a flat 10 and this one's a, a two. I've used it so much that most of the writing's gone. It's one of my favorite brushes. I also have what we call uh, a mop. And a mop is for tapping the gold down if I need to um, down the road. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting, this is not the rabbit skin glue size. This is my gilding water. 
And I think that I'm just gonna start with uh, a little bit of this guy and this. And the idea is to get it wet. This will activate the rabbit skin glue. Now remember there's alcohol in this. So um, the alcohol will evaporate quick. And so we don't have a lot of time to mess with this um, part. But I always like to make sure that I have more than the gold will cover. Okay. Some kind of furry thing there. Okay. So then I'm just gonna take this piece of glue and set it down. And so my glue, my gold wasn't big enough to cover all that, no worries. I just give it an, a nice gentle rub, nothing crazy. Maybe count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And gently lift. And you can see not much is left here, and it's done a pretty nice job of covering on the first go. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the next section wet. This is a nice straight section. You um, try not to hit the, the gold, um, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna put a whole nother layer on. I definitely want at least two layers on this because I just think this is such a beautiful image and it's amazing to think that Mary herself is the one that wrote it. So icon means image. And so even though this isn't a traditional icon of sorts, it's still an icon nonetheless. So again, I'm just gonna set it down. Notice there's like little tears right there and that might bother some of you perfectionists out there. Um, it's okay. We can fix it later. Um, we just need to have faith in the process and um, leave it be. You never want to go back and touch your gold while it's drying. One, two, three, four, five, and up it comes. Boop. Alrighty, so there are spots that were missed there, right there and there, but that's okay. Not worried. <laughs> Just breathe. I do need to cut my next piece into two strips. Okay, it's ready to go. Let's get some size on here, or I shouldn't say size, gilding water on here. I try not to touch my gold at all while it's drying. You need to just leave it be, and that is just so hard for folks. Just let it go. Um, and I like to look left and right, put different angles on my view so that I can make sure that everything's got some liquid on it. I have a lot on this. I'm gonna just kind of wrap it around and maybe do too quickly. All right, so here we go, piece number three. Oops, I tapped it down before I wanted to, so I had to go with it. Okay, a gentle rub. One, two, three, four, five, nice and easy. Don't pull too fast. And there we go. Oh, that's a nice one. And this one's kind of turning a corner, so. Re-wet it. We re wet it. Re wet it again, real quick. I'm not sure how far this piece will go, so I think I'll go out to here. This head looks a little odd. Um, the more research I did, turns out Mary had a crown on this image. And so I have no clue what it looked like, but again, I took creative freedom and I'm going to create a crown for her. She is the queen of heaven. So it just happens to be my parish. <laughs> All right, gentle rub. Okay. 
All right, let that sit and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And then nice and easy. Okay, move it along. I'm gonna cut my next piece in half. I guess I should make it so you can see. She totally missed that whole piece, didn't you? She'd be a better video videographer. Again, I'm a science and theology teacher <laughs> who enjoys iconography on the side as a way to pray. and share prayer in the world. All right. Here we go, next piece. So nice to have a way to control this gold. One, two, Three, four, five. Nice and easy. All right. Now I'm going to continue all the way around and then I'll get back to you once I've made it. How's that sound? So when you have tiny spots left like this, it doesn't make sense to use a whole sheet. We can use pieces that are left over to try to get some of those. So when I have little things like this, I might just do one little spot at a time and use a place where I have leftover gold on one of these sheets. So maybe this right here. Oops, oh, I slid it. Yeah, and that's always bad when it slides. Um, try another spot. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And I might use something with a bigger spot for this next one. This one looks pretty good. All right. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have our last little one here. Ooh, this one right here, look at that. It's like made just for this piece. Look at that. I'm getting any better than that. And I moved it ever so slightly. Not the best. If you want to get some of these places where it, you know it didn't work the first time, you can paint the size right on top of the last layer. Because there's no rabbit skin glue in it, it won't leave a mess. Um, and you can take the mop and pat things down. The mop's going to help us get rid of some of these things that aren't supposed to be there. A lot of times the gold will stick where you don't want it to. <laughs> um, and so you can take your mop once it's dried and kind of work the gold off where it doesn't belong. And you can tap and pat. I, I don't overdo this. It's tempted to go nuts and just push really hard, but I just like to gently Tap and, and remove things that aren't attached. Do not do this unless it's dry <laughs> or um, it's going to make a mess of things. And again, we're dealing with um, alcohol, so it does evaporate pretty quick. But remember, the other component is water. And so we will have a lot of gold where we don't want it. And I do have a way to take care of that. 
Um, but so now you can actually see, not bad for our first layer. There are definitely places that need loved. Um, and so I'm gonna do a second layer. And when you're doing a second layer, it's just like the first. I'm gonna take my sheets and cut them in half. This one's kind of messy. The sheet has big holes in it, but whatever. And again, as many layers as you want to put on is okay. So um, I'm just going to take again my square brush and I'm going to go right over the first layer of gold. And I'm going to put the alcohol water situation on and the gold doesn't like it. You'll see that the gold tarnishes right away. That's okay. Um, but I'm just going to lay this on. One, two, three, four, five. And you'll see it covers quite a bit. This is going to be pretty. And then I move on to the next piece. Ooh, I used my mop. <laughs> And again, I'm going to try to get some of those places that it didn't work the first time. I can see a hair in there. That's bad, but oh well. Forever part of my icon. This is what it is. So I just lay the next piece down. And I'm going to work my way all the way around again for a second time. And you can do this two times, three times, however many times you want. The more gold you put on, the better. So I'm going to do the second layer and then get back with you. Okay, so I have two layers on and I don't see any red really coming through anywhere. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you can see where like the lines are for the outside of my like almond. Um, and you can see where the lines where the gold's supposed to stop. And so it's gone over on the left and the right. I'm not gonna deal with that just yet, but I will in the very near future. I wanna let this sit for about 10 minutes to make sure that it's truly dry before I do anything else to it. And yes, there are places that it's like lifted and places that it looks loose. Um, if you don't let it dry, you can really mess it up. And so I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and then I'll come back and start cleaning this up. Okay, so I'm ready to clean up my gold. I figured out that I used 10 sheets of gold. So if this was actual 24 karat gold, that would be close to $30 of gold just on this one little icon. Um, with the um, artificial gold, they're looking at close to 20 bucks. So it is the most expensive part of the icon, um, even more expensive than the board, uh, but the gold is very symbolic. It represents the uncreated light of God, um, which is pretty special. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just gently get rid of anything that's loose. And you'll have gold leaf like floating around your house or wherever you're doing this all over. Uh, <laughs> it's everywhere. I have gold leaf on everything, the dining room table, the light fixtures, whatever. It seems to get everywhere. Okay, and it's okay if it's coming up now, it will never burnish. And so it needs to come up if it's loose. It's kind of blew it off there. Okay, my next order of business is to I want to clean up my edges and get rid of the gold where it doesn't belong. If I were to burnish it in now, it would be a lot harder to do. So, um, I don't know, this little moon section right here shouldn't have any gold on it whatsoever. So I thought this would be a good place to show you um, what to do to get rid of excess gold. And so I just have um, a bottle that I filled with distilled water. And I have my two square brush. And I have Q-tips. So for big areas, I'll just dip my Q-tip in the water. Um, I tend to kind of get rid of the excess. And then I just start rubbing where I don't want it. 
And when I get close to the lines, I calm down a little bit because I don't want to take off um, any of the gold that I want to keep. But notice there was no um, bowl under this, so it's not real challenging to get this off. When I get to a spot where there's a point, I'll take the brush and dip it in. Um, I tend to just kind of pinch the end to get the little bit of off so it's not so wet. I don't want it to drip. And I just clean up the edge. The stiffer your brush is for this, the better. All right, so right there I have the moon free. Another spot that could come up is this here. And I did have a, a tiny bit of excess red here um, that is not where I want to have gold. I can see my etching. So it's okay that the bowl is showing up there because I didn't want to have gold there. I can see my lines. And this particular image um, it's going to have a lot of paint on the gold, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. And I can see where my lines are. And I'm just going to remove all this extra. And again, a stiff uh, paintbrush and Q-tips. And once it gets all gunky like that, I'll um, pick up a new one. And so I'm going to go around the board and clean this up. So I'll get back to you when I'm done. All right, so I've pretty much cleared up my edges. It looks pretty good. I have gold only where I want gold. Once it's sat for about an hour and everything is completely dry, um, it can be burnished. I have uh, agate stones that you can, you can find on Amazon. This one has a nice point on it. Uh, I like the hockey stick because it looks like a hockey stick. And this rounded edge is the part I use to burnish. Sometimes when you're using the point like this, it can leave lines because your bowl is soft uh, and it will harden over several days. If you wanted to put a design in your gold, um, you would have done that on the bowl. You could just kind of etch and draw on it. And then when you gold leaf, the design will come through. You can kind of see it uh, because I etched the crown, see it? Uh, and I did that when I etched the image on the board and it came through the bowl and it came through uh, the gold leaf. And so you can put designs on uh, by etching the bowl. So I like the hockey stick, but you can use any agate stone you want. And I suggest you find a spot that's not super important. Like I don't know that I would start at the her crown, uh, maybe down here at the bottom where it's busy and just try rubbing it nice and light at first. Uh, and I usually do uh, lots of different directions. And what this is doing is polishing the gold and making sure that it really isn't going anywhere making it a permanent <laughs> attachment to the bowl underneath. I don't know if you can see where I've burnished it compared to where I have it. There's a line there where it's getting shiny. The more layers of gold you have, um, the more uh, mirror like this will be. I only have two layers of gold. <laughs> I already spent 30 bucks. So that's where I stop. Let's be honest with you, once you anoint the icon, the shininess goes away anyway. We like to calm it down. But the goal is to get that mirror-like shine where you can see your reflection in the icon. I like to go vertical, horizontal, diagonal, just get lots of different directionality into it. If you push real hard, you can scratch the bowl or scratch the board or scratch the gold. So I use the hockey stick and I try to make it um, as best I can. 
And I think that you can actually see my fingers reflecting in it. Might be better if I actually had something that you could see the image. It does show up there. You can see it's blue. Uh, you can see the paintbrush in the gold. Compared to where I haven't burnished, it's not as nice. And so you're gonna work this. If you find it's getting gunky um, or the gold is coming off, it's probably not dry. You should stop and let it sit for a bit longer. Um, but we do all the burnishing now. So I'm gonna work my way around this board in lots of different directions. If you want it to make it look like it's radiating out from someone's head, like on a halo, you can follow the shape. Now this particular one, um, she has these rays of light coming out from her, which are the lights, the rays from heaven, the light of God. And so this is kind of following the directionality of the paint work that's going to be coming on this icon. So I may continue in that fashion for this one because it makes sense. Um, but I do like to make them as shiny as I can just because it's pretty awesome sauce to, to see all this work end up in something really beautiful. And the fact that it's representing God is pretty special. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish this whole thing. Um, I found a tacky spot as I was going through, right in through here. So what I'm going to do is take one of my um, pieces of gold. That's a pretty decent size. This one looks good. Or maybe this one's even better. Look at all that. And you can just breathe on it. And you can see where it gets wet. And um, there's enough glue coming through that I can just stick that on. And so any places you find that you, you want to touch up, even after you've started burnishing it, you can. There's one there where I can see the red coming through. And so just breathing on it, it's pretty cool. It's um, very much like um, the breath of God or the Holy Spirit, you know, that kind of thing. When you breathe on your board, um, and so that's a way to do kind of little touch-ups as you go. And I would let that sit until I, I come back to that at the end. Um, but I'm going to continue on. Okay, so this to me is my finished product. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it looks like it's not perfect, but, you know, when you anoint it, it takes the shine and some of those, uh, you know, imperfections away along this, you know, on the surface. It will all be kind of dull, not as shiny. We I mean, like to knock it down. And so um, I'm pretty happy with it. I can see my details for my crown. I know where I'm headed. I think it looks like an almond and I'm cleaned up enough that I can start with the paint. So the next order of business is going to be the background and then we move towards the foreground. So we're gonna do some clouds next.